What is ovarian cancer, Amanda? So ovarian cancer, Sabine, is actually malignant tumour of one or both ovaries. There's many types of ovarian cancer. In particular, there's three types. It's the sixth most common cause of cancer death in Australian women. Every year, there's 1,500 women diagnosed with ovarian cancer. That's a lot of women. Even though ovarian cancer is less common than lung and breast cancer, it's important to recognise the signs and symptoms, but it's difficult to actually detect early, uh, these early as they're very vague and non-specific. Almost every woman will experience these symptoms at some time, and in most cases, they won't be the cause of ovarian cancer. Can you explain the symptoms? So as I said, they can be quite vague. Bloating, abdominal or pelvic pain, feeling full after you've eaten just a small amount, frequent urination or going to the toilet often when there's no infection, changes in your bowel habits, back pain, heartburn, pain during intercourse, excessive fatigue, unexplained weight gain or loss, and any unexplained bleeding. Uh, keeping a record of how often the symptoms occur and make an appointment to see your GP if you have experienced some of the symptoms of ovarian cancer for more than two weeks. Ask your doctor about the possibility of ovarian cancer. So they are quite vague, but keeping a record can actually help identify. Typically, it starts as a painless lump on the ovary that gradually gets bigger over time. But there's plenty of room for that tumour to grow, so it takes a while for you to be aware of those changes. Can you explain the risk factors for ovarian cancer, Amanda? There's quite a few actually, Sabine. So they include increasing age, so anything over 50 years of age. On average, it's 64 years of age that women are diagnosed a family history of ovarian cancer, breast and bowel cancer, um, never giving birth or having a baby, early onset of periods, so that's before 12 years of age, um, experiencing late menopause at the other end of the scale, so that's over 55 years, never having taken the contraceptive pill, having endometriosis, uh, diabetes are also risk factors, being a smoker and being overweight considerable risk and being on long-term estrogen only menopause replacement therapy and fertility treatment. Are there any protective factors? So having children before the age of 35, breastfeeding, taking combined contraceptive pill and of course surgical removal of the ovaries and fallopian tubes is also protective. How is ovarian cancer diagnosed? Your GP will perform an abdominal or pelvic examination to determine the cause of the symptoms. And if this is inconclusive, a transvaginal ultrasound will be performed. If these assessments and investigations suggest ovarian cancer, then an in immediate referral to a gynecological oncologist will be recommended. There is currently no effective screening program for ovarian cancer in Australia. So it's extremely important to know when it comes to your body, what's normal for you. It will then be easier to recognise when things change and then to seek some professional advice. It's worth noting, screening tests look for types of cancer in people with no symptoms. That's your breast screen, brow screening program, and the new cervical screening test, which replaced the pap test. Also a little reminder, the the cervical screening test, which has replaced that pap test, looks for human papillomavirus or HPV, which causes most cancer cases of cervical cancer, but not ovarian cancer. The Ovarian Cancer Australia has produced a symptom diary. It's a great tool that helps women to easily record symptoms that may be associated with ovarian cancer and more common and less serious conditions. So after recording your symptoms, women can use the symptom diary to clearly communicate with their doctor about symptoms they're experiencing. There's also an electronic version of the symptom diary or mobile app called KISS and Makeup. It can be downloaded from www.ovariancancer.net.au. If the community has got any more queries, who can they contact Amanda? 
So they can make an appointment at the Well Women's Clinic and that's myself on 555 000, or certainly the GP clinic on 555 Thank you Amanda for sharing this important message with me and our community.